this dissection. Here I have a cow's eye and the first thing we can see on this cow's eye is the cornea. That's the cornea. And we also have what we call the palpebrae and it's also known as the eyelid. You can also see some extrinsic muscles. Um, those are just external muscles that the eye has. And we also can see the optic nerve which is located at the posterior or back of the eye. So the first thing we're going to do is remove what we call periorbital adipose. It's the same thing as fat. Um, it actually cushions the eye in the eye socket. When we remove the periorbital adipose, the first tunic that we encounter is called the sclera. The sclera is also known as the white of the eye, and actually the cornea is part of the sclera, except it's just modified to allow light to enter the eye. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and start dissecting. Now the cow's eye is very tough, so it requires some pressure and some, sometimes you have to use more than one tool to penetrate it. Now at this point, once you penetrate it, you may want to put on some safety goggles because you have fluid that squirts out sometimes. Uh, that fluid is aqueous humor. Okay, that fluid is coming out. I also have some vitreous humor. Vitreous humor is this gel-like substance and that's what maintains the shape of the eye and holds the retina firmly against the back of the eye. Okay. Try to get that out. Now this uh, dark area or pigmented area of the eye is known as the choroid. That's the second tunic of the eye, and it is also the vascular tunic. That means that it has a blood supply or a, and also a nutritive, a nutritive uh, function. Um, it also, anteriorly, the choroid forms the iris of the eye, okay? And the iris of the eye is discontinuous. That means it doesn't fully cover the entire eye, and that allows uh, for the pupil, the formation of the pupil. Right here is where you can view the pupil, is that opening there, and around it is the iris. Now the iris is made up of radial and circular muscle fibers. And when you're in bright light and close vision, those circular muscle fibers of the iris, they contract. That means they shorten, and the pupil constricts. Now when you're in dim light and you're farther away, what happens is the radial muscle fibers of the iris, they contract, and then the pupil of the eye dilates. It becomes larger. This delicate membrane here, located at the posterior part of the eye, that's what you call the retina. Okay, now the retina has two layers. It has an epithelial layer that abuts or touches the actual choroid. It also has a neural layer where you find your photoreceptor cells, the rods and the cones. Lateral to the optic nerve, the optic nerve we mentioned early on is here, so it's about here. Lateral to that optic nerve is where you have a location called the fovea centralis. Now the fovea centralis has a plethora of cones or an abundance of cones. 
And that's where you have your discriminative vision, your greatest acuity of vision. Here is the lens of the eye. And it's a very hard, tough structure. And it actually separates the anterior segment of the eye from the posterior segment of the eye. And it also focuses the light on the retina. Now, the anterior segment of the eye is further divided into the anterior chamber and the posterior chamber. And that's basically in front of the iris and behind the iris. And that's where you find the aqueous humor. Now, the aqueous humor, that's generated by the capillaries of the ciliary processes, which are part of the ciliary bodies. Now, the function of the aqueous humor is to provide nutrients to the avascular cornea and the avascular lens. It also maintains the intraocular pressure of the eyes. And that concludes our dissection. Thank you.